Hello friends, this video on organic chemistry basic part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about resonance. So the first question comes to our mind is why we are studying resonance and why this term resonance came into picture. So what happened is scientist or this chemist, they found the length of CC single bond using the length, I mean, uh, they, they found is that CC single bond is 154 picometer and they have seen this in various carbon compounds ethane, propane, butane they, they found that experimentally in that the CC single bond is 154 picometer so theoretically they have assumed that CC single bond is always 154 picometer similarly when they saw ethene, propane they found that CC double bond is always 134 picometer and this is this is theoretical now theoretically if I am to draw what is the uh, structure of ethane I will draw something like this and I will say that this is my bond length 154 picometer and if I am to draw a structure of ethene I will draw something like this and with the carbon carbon bond length 134 picometer because experimentally and uh, with a lot of experiments, they have proved that CC single bond is 154 and DC single double bond is 134. So theoretically, if without experiment, I have to find uh, the structure, draw the structure of this is ethane and ethene. I will draw something like this. This 154 picometer CC bond here, CC bond is 134 picometer. Similarly, with this knowledge, if I am supposed to draw a benzene structure, I will draw something like this and I will say that this length, let me put the carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the bond between carbon 1 and carbon 2 will be 134 picometer because it is double bond and bond between carbon 1 and carbon 6 will be 154 picometer because it is single bond. So that is a theoretical thing. But now when the chemist observed this, this is my ethane, this is ethene and this is benzene. But now when the chemist observed this using magnifying instruments, they found that ethane is perfectly fine, ethene is perfectly fine ethane. So ethane, theoretically we thought it would be 154 meter, it was 150 meter, correct. Ethene also, we thought it will be 134 meter, 134 picometer and it was 134 picometer. There is no doubt, absolutely things are perfectly fine. But when they saw benzene, they were surprised. It was 139 picometer. Any of the carbon they took, the carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 2, carbon 3 or carbon 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6 or 1, 6, any of the carbon 2 carbon they took, they found the bond length is 139 picometer and they are amazed why this is 139, why this is between, if you see 139, somewhere between 134 and 154, this is for single bond, this is, this is for double bond, it is for single bond. So they were amazed why it is 139, why it is between double bond and single bond. Thus they came up with the concept called resonance. They told that in case of benzene there is no double bond or single bond. There is a resonance structure where the electrons are delocalized. We will discuss what is resonance but the reason why we came uh, with this word resonance was this. Theoretically they expected the benzene to be uh, having this structure 134 and 1. Uh, 54 picometer the carbon carbon bond length but experimentally they found that it is 139 picometer to, to, uh, to explain this behavior of uh, different uh, uniform bond length they came up with the concept of this so as I told there are so many organic molecules whose behaviors cannot be explained by a single Lewis structure for example benzene we have seen right so benzene you can draw two Lewis structures, we will we'll show you how, actually when you draw benzene you can draw two structures, this and these. These structures are canonical structures or resonating structures or configurations, you can name any of these. All these mean same, when you see canonical structures, resonating structure or contributing structure, they are all same. They are different Lewis structures which you can draw. But they are not the actual structure because the behavior of benzene cannot be explained by any of these structures. You have structure 1, structure 2. You can't explain the structure of benzene, the, the properties of benzene based on these structures. If you see, using the magnifying glass, we saw that the bond length is not as per these structures, right? They're uniform. So they can be explained by something else, and that something else is called 
resonance high wave structure and this is more experimental right so this is what explains the physical and chemical property of benzene and this is the actual experimental structure right so please note these are theoretical so theoretical structures are called canonical structure or also called resonating structure or contributing structures and the actual structure is called resonance hybrid structure the resonance hybrid structure is the actual structure and it, it actually explains the physical and chemical property of a given compound correct so if you see there are the, these structures are hypothetical and they are not real structures correct but the resonance adds to the stability we'll, we'll discuss this the more resonating structure you have or the more canonical structure or the more contributing structure you have the more stable is the compound that is the law right so if a compound gives 10 resonating structure and the other compound gives 2 the one gives 10 resonating structure will be more stable as compared to 2 given other factors are same correct so this is my actual experimental shape of benzene correct so what i understood that resonance is nothing but they are some compound whose which can have multiple levis structure and none of these levis structure can explain the property of the compound these structures are called canonical resonating or contributing structure but the real structure is called resonance hybrid structure so it's experimental the more the number you have of uh, resonating structure we make the more stable is the compound correct now the question is which compound will show resonance and which compound will not? So there is going to be some condition for resonance. The first is the compound has to be planar. Only if the compound is planar, the electrons will move around, right? They'll be free to move around, correct? It has to, for example, benzene, you see, is planar. This is the structure of benzene, right? Sigma bonds are stronger, please note. So only pi bond breaks. If you compare sigma and pi bond, sigma bond is strong bond and pi bond is weak. So in case of resonance, only pi bond breaks. Only pi bond breaks. Sigma bond never breaks in case of resonance. Right? Because for resonance, you don't need any nucleophile attack, you don't need any solvent, right? You don't need anything. If there is a example, benzene will always show resonance. Even if it is stable, it will show resonance. So you don't you don't break uh, strong bonds, you break only weak bonds. The pi bonds are weak bonds as compared to sigma bond. For example, if you see here, this is my sigma bond, this is my pi bond, right? So in this case, I can break this bond, this, this pi bond. Correct? Because it's a weak bond. I can break, break weak bonds for resonance. And also it should have delocalized pi electrons for resonance to occur. For example, in this case, it has delocalized pi electrons. Right? For resonance. So first thing, it has to be planar. It should have this, uh, also note that for resonance, only pi bond breaks. And it should have pi electrons delocalized for resonance. We'll do some practice for resonance. For example, this is one structure and you define the resonating structure. So in this case, if you see, we can move electrons. So in this case, if you break this bond, this bond, so there are two atoms here, electrons here. If you break this and if you move this here, this in this carbon, so what will form? So what will form is, uh, let me write that actually here. So what will form is CH2, double bond CH, this will not touch. This also will not touch and this bond will break and will be a single bond and here will, this was already there, right? So if you break, if you break this bond and I am transferring the electron to the right, so this guy will get two electrons. So it will get a negative charge and this guy will get a positive charge, right? And it will get two electrons, right? That means a negative charge, correct? So now what will happen? One negative charge and positive charge will combine to form a bond. So that means it will form a bond here. So what this guy will do is it will form this structure CH2. Let me try this. So this plus will be there. This two positive and negative charge will form a bond. So this is also one resulting structure. Similarly, in this case now, if I again break this bond, see this has two electrons here. If I break this bond, uh, bond and put both the carbon in uh, electron in this carbon, so what will happen is this will form something like this CH2 single bond. In this carbon will get two electrons and a negative charge and this since carbon I'm breaking a the bond there is all the both the electrons going to this carbon so this carbon will have positive charge in the other positive charge will be here and I have CH double bond right now what will happen is this positive and this negative charge will form a bond because there's two electrons here 
right? So this will form CH2 plus C double bond CH then single CH CH2. So if you see these are the three resonating structure we get. So if you see these are my three resonating structure. Here your positive charge is here, here positive is here, positive is here. Correct. So the best way to move electron is just these two electrons, right? Put in some carbon. And since this bond was shared by this carbon and this carbon, so this carbon will get a positive charge, this carbon will get a negative charge. And two electrons, right? And then you can form a bond actually. Positive dynamic charge, you know. Example here, right? So there are two electrons here, the negative charge and positive charge. So you can actually form a bond. Correct. This is something like this. You have this p orbital. There's two electrons here. This is the p orbital here, which is not having any electrons. So you can actually form a bond. It will form a double bond. Here also, if you see, this is negative charge. So this is a p orbital with two electrons here. Correct. This is a p orbital with empty electron because there is positive charge, so they'll form a bond. And that is what you get here. Double. So we'll see more resonance. For example, here if you see, same thing. I had this structure. So in this structure, if I move these two electrons to this carbon, right? So what happens is these two electrons are in this carbon. So what will happen is this carbon will get a two electrons and a negative charge, right? And this carbon will get a positive charge here. And this was already there. So this positive charge, this negative charge, and two electrons, right? When you merge. You form a double bond, correct? So it was a single bond. You form a double bond. If you want, I can show you the structure. This one, let's suppose I had, I am moving these electrons here. So this becomes CH. So this was my structure, right? This was my structure. I have broken this bond. I broke this bond. I broke this bond actually. This bond. This is carbon one, carbon two, and carbon. I broke the bond in carbon one and carbon two. Right, I broke this bond and I put this electrons here. So what I'll get is two electrons here. This positive is already there, so I'll remove from the hydrogens now. This is what I'll get. Now since I moved the electron, this will get a negative charge, this will get a positive charge. Now since there's a negative charge, there's a positive charge, and this has p orbitals has two electrons here. You see, there's an empty p orbital, they'll overlap, right? They'll overlap and they'll form something like this. The first carbon has a positive charge, this will be here, and this will form a double bond. And this is what we have formed here. So you see, the this can exist in either of these forms. So if you want to represent, sometimes this carbon 3 will have positive charge, sometimes carbon 1 will have positive charge, right? So what do you represent? You represent in this fashion also, half positive charge in carbon 1, half in carbon 2. And the bond also you see sometimes here, sometimes here, so you can represent in this fashion. Or you can also represent in this fashion where you see that this is the bond and this charge is somewhere here, right? Or you can represent in this fashion. So any other fashion you can represent because actually this is the structure or this. These are my structure. These are, these are my real structures. Okay? These are my canonical structures or the register. These are my resonance hybrid structures. Correct. Same thing you will see here also if you see this guy, right? So here if you move electron from here to here, you get negative charge here and you get positive charge here. The positive and negative will form a bond. So here in this case, this positive and this negative is form a bond. Correct. Now in this case, again you move electron on this side. This guy will get negative charge. This guy will get positive charge, right? This positive and this negative will form a bond in this fashion. Right. Similarly, here SC and minus if you see. So here if you see, if you uh, break a bond in this fashion, correct? This will get a negative charge, this will get a positive charge. And this negative positive will form a bond and become triple bond. And this is an negative charge. Right, this, these two will form a bond. So you get this. So there are two resulting structures. You can take more example. 
in case of CS3, NO2 minus also if you see here, this bond may break, right? So this has two electron, both will go to this oxygen, you get negative charge, you get a positive charge. So now if you see this negative and this positive will combine to form a double bond, so you see there is a double bond here, right? And this got a negative charge. Correct. Similarly here if you see, same thing, this positive and negative will combine to form a bond and this bond will break, right? And form a negative charge here, positive. This bond will break, form a negative here, positive here. And this positive and this negative will combine to form a bond here. So there are so many resonating structure in this case. We'll take one example here. So here if you see, so here oxygen if you see it has two lone pair, it will give one lone pair here, right? And oxygen will label a positive charge and this guy will get a negative charge, right? So since this guy there's a hydrogen attached here, please note. So this carbon already had one, two, three, four bond. It cannot accumulate more negative charge. So this bond will break. This bond will break. So what will happen is this guy will get negative charge or the two electrons lone pair will come here and this will get positive charge. So positive and negative will neutralize here. Correct. So if you see what will happen is they will form a bond here. This guy will form a bond here. Right. This electrons uh, two moved here. It formed a bond here and this bond broke and you got a lone pair here. In the second resonating structure what will happen is these two electron, uh, this electron pair right this will move here. The moment it will move here, it cannot accumulate uh, 10 electrons. This carbon can have at the max 8 electrons. So this bond will also break and both the electrons will shift in this position. So if you see, both the electrons are here. Now, also, now one more structure is possible is this case. These electrons will try to move here. So it will try to move here, right? And there was a positive charge here, right? So it moved here and again it formed a bond. Correct. And then again it formed a bond here and here. So if you see there are so many resonating structures possible for this case. Because the electrons are free to move around. Usually here is always two jump, right? So electrons are jumping from oxygen here if you see to this carbon and this since this carbon can't hold an electron, again jumping in this carbon. Here also electron are jumping from this carbon to this carbon but this carbon is kind of cannot hold two electron, 10 electron so again the electron move to this carbon, this bond group. Here also if you see electrons are jumping from this to this oxygen right and then again jumping to this carbon right this bond breaks. Same thing here again this electrons are jumping from here to here where this carbon can't hold 10 electrons again this bond breaks and you electrons are moving in this carbon. Here also if you see this electron moves from here to here this carbon can't hold the electrons, here it moves back to this oxygen. And thus you see so many resonance. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.